so glad you're able to make it. I think um, we'll coin all of you that are here today the frozen chosen because um, you, uh, you made it, um, bearing through the snow. Um, today we're going to be looking at uh, a book that you may not have heard spoken of very often, uh, but it's from the Minor Prophets. Um, it's Jonah, or sometimes I have a weird sense of humor. I, I, I sometimes put Minor Prophets as people from other countries, and so I, I would have Jonah would be, it'd be Jonah the Swede, y- Jonah the Swede. I, I, I just have these ideas of things. You've maybe heard Malachi, the Italian prophet, um, and others. I, I'm trying to do a Scottish accent for Haggai. I mean, like it just because like, it sounds like Haggai. You know what I mean? Just be, but I can't do that very well. But um, just the minor. Pro- I have a weird sense of brain. My mind goes a little weird. But but I, I like the minor prophets because they communicate consistently so much about the heart of God to a people that actually are pretty rebellious at the time. Most of them are speaking about people um, that that that, that they were around that point. So some of the different prophets would be speaking about the people in which they live and breathe with and there. And so Hosea speaks to his own culture and his own context. Um, But whether it's Israel or Judah, they speak within that. But there's a few of them that speak outside. They, 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 They show God's heart for those who'd be considered outsiders. And one of those books is Jonah. Now, we're going to have a little bit of fun today. If you've got, hopefully you have uh, one of those um, reading notes and things like that. But we're going to go through and we're going to walk through this. We're going to have some fun with this book, okay? By the end of this, hopefully it will be solidified in your brain, okay? But if you've got Bibles, go ahead and open those up to Jonah. It's, uh, and, and Jonah, it's one of those 12 pro- there's minor prophets. And the minor prophets compared to the major prophets... It's not saying they're, like, the minor ones didn't make it to the major leagues or anything like that. It's not talking about, like, um, how good they are. They're all good. Um, major and minor have to do with the size of the book, okay? So there's five, um, there's five um, major prophet, prophetic books, and then there's 12 minor prophetic books, okay? And it's on one scroll. It used to fit on one scroll, and they called it the, tw- the scroll of the 12. And that's where it's at, okay? So Jonah. But we're going to have a good time. And I like to play around a little bit, so we're going to have some fun. Um, and I'm going to need a couple of you to help me. There may be food involved as a reward, but I'll have a couple of you help me so that we solidify what Jonah is, okay, right now? All the extroverts are going, yes, maybe I'll get called on stage. Most of you are introverts saying, oh, God, please don't let him look at me right now. Please do not let him look. And that's a prayer. God, please. <laughs> anyways, um, so look, I helped you pray today. But um, anyways, so we're going to go through J- Jonah. So if you've got Bibles, go ahead and open those up. And uh, we're going to be reading through a, a large section of it, too. My hope is this, that as you hear this, that God intersects your life. And we find ourselves, even as we're reading about what God has done, God may be speaking to you and me where we find ourselves right now. Okay? Here we go. Jonah, chapter 1, begins this way, okay? The word of the Lord came from Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. If we were going to, we're going to look at Jonah and look at each chapter... We're going to see this beautiful story that unfolds, and, and what we find is kind of surprising. The very first couple um, sentences in the book of Jonah is Jonah's running. He's running from God. It's like it's the best. I love the Bible because if I was editing it and making it look good, I would do way better than editing this. Like, this does not make people look good oftentimes, but it rings so true, doesn't it? And, and so as I'm looking at the scripture and I read this first part, we see Jonah running away and actually going as far away as you possibly could go to where he was called. Let's, look, let's bring the map up real quick. The map, if you see the map, this is, this is ancient Near Eastern world, about where the 550 miles is, that, that, that right there, that spot where it says 550 miles, that's Israel at the time, okay? And what's happening is this. Israel is kind of caught between this, these two big warring 
countries usually. It's Assyria to the north, okay, where Nineveh is, which is the capital of Assyria. And then down to the south, you see it down by where Joppa is and stuff. That's down toward where Egypt is. And, and what happens is they would just kind of beat each other up, try to beat each other up. And so what they would do is they would kind of walk up and kind of punch each other in the face. But every time they would go toward each other, Israel's stuck in the middle. And they just kind of, they're just like the, 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 the kid that's the, the, the kid that gets beat up all the time at school. He's kind of stuck in the middle of between these situations. If Assyria at this time, if Assyria was on the elementary school ground, playground, they would be the big bully that keeps beating people up and taking their lunch money. Seriously, that's how Assyria was. Among all the ancient Near Eastern world, at this time, Assyria is the big dog. They're the ones nobody wants to mess with. They're, they're known for the way in which they love to inflict terror into people by the way they were so um, intensely mean. If they came in and they took over a country, they wouldn't just take it over and say, okay, you got to pay taxes to us. They would do that because they didn't have farming and things. They're in a desert. They had to take everybody else's resources. But as they're there, they would basically say, they'd take you over, but then what they'd do is they'd take the young girls and take the older guys, and then what they'd do is they'd, they'd actually put hooks through their nose, and they would drag them basically from where they are, hundreds of miles, you can see this, 500 miles, from there to back to their country it, to be in slavery forever and they were just mean and they knew that so they would use examples of this so this this country is like the biggest baddest meanest country at the time and jonah knows that so god says go to the city capital nineveh and i want you to preach against it no god and that's what happens he runs we, we see actually he runs and he gets to Joppa. He's heading for Tarshish. He's not going north and east like God's calling him. He's going south and west. And as he's running away, God keeps pursuing him. I don't know if you've heard about the story of a camping trip. There's a camping trip that was happening. It was a church camping trip, and they, um, and they were on the edge there, and there was two friends that were camping next to each other, and all of a sudden, a bear starts stirring, and they see a bear, and all of a sudden, one of them starts to take off, and the other one starts putting his shoes on. And he looks at him and says, why are you putting your shoes on? You're not going to be able to outrun the bear. And he looks at the guy that doesn't have shoes on and says, as he's tying his shoes, I don't have to outrun the bear. I just have to outrun you, Right? <laughs> The sense is this, I just have to outrun you. But the beauty is this, we can't outrun God. We cannot outrun God. God is still pursuing, not meant to hurt us, but desire that we would be in communion and relationship with him. So this first chapter of Jonah is he's a running rebel. What happens is this, he goes on the ship, he's running away, and then on the ship, God brings this huge windstorm. They start freaking out. These guys live in the ocean, and they're nervous, and they're like, what are we gonna do, what are we gonna do? Uh, I don't know who came up with the idea of throwing him over the edge. I think it was Jonah, actually. Just throw me over the edge. It's done. God's coming after me. And it seems weird, maybe, but to an ancient Near Eastern world, it would just be a sacrifice. And so as they do this, Jonah's like, I, I, I'm, I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. And, and what happens is in that moment, when they see Jonah chapter 1, they begin to see that God has a purpose for Jonah, and Jonah's running away from God. And they throw him over the edge. He just goes right over the edge. And this is what it says. This is what it says. So, I mean, how many good friends do you have there? But, but this is what he says. Jonah chapter 1 says, Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. This is key, though. At this, the men on board of the ship feared the Lord. Same Hebrew word for worship. And then offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. But the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. Jonah chapter 1. I need your help. I, I really do. Um, and usually, again, it's a snow day. Snow days are the best. But I, I, I had planned to talk to some of you, but I didn't know if who was going to be here or not. So I really do need someone to help me. Come on stage. Would someone do that? some extrovert be just ready to go. Do you want to come? Do you, I want to point you out. Ready to come? Come on up. That'd be great. I'm so excited for you. Okay. And that somebody said yes. That's what I'm really excited about. Come on up. Come on up. 
Would you tell everybody your name? Would you come on right up on the stage here, okay? And what's your first name? Leah. 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 Say, Leah, do you want to say hi to everybody real quick? Hi, Leah. Okay. Way to be brave. I'm really proud of you, okay? If you would sit right here, okay? Now, I'm going to have you help me be an illustration, okay? You're going to be an illustration the whole time, okay? Do you, um, when you go to school and things like that, do you ever run? Do you ever run anywhere sometimes? Do you ever run after something before? You have? Okay. What does that look like? When you run, what does it look like? Sometimes you're scared. Okay. Yeah. So actually, that's a really good. This is, this is really good. You want to preach? Because you're doing better than, okay, okay. So if you want to, <laughs> if you want to pretend like you're running really fast, would you do that? Can you show me that real quick? Can you do that real quick? Perfect. And can you move those little feet a little bit? Okay, good. Now, I've got a little running. Okay, that's so good. Look at this. And I've got some props, okay? Now, do you want to put these on? I don't know if you want to. You don't. I don't know, they stink a little bit. So, okay, let's just see them right there, okay? But it looks like you got running shoes on, okay? You got running shoes on? So, in chapter one of Jonah, and, and they're going to help us, okay? They're going to yell it out, okay? Okay? So, chapter one of Jonah, that Jonah is a running rebel. So, let's say it together, ready? He's a running rebel. Okay, let's say it one more time, like really loud, okay? Ready? He's a running rebel. Oh, do you hear that? That's really good, huh? So, every time they say running rebel, I want you to run like you're running really fast, okay? Because that's what Jonah's doing. He's running from God at this moment, okay? And I don't know about you, but in Jonah chapter 1, we're going to be looking at these different places. Jonah's running from God. (laughs) He's a running rebel from God. And I wonder, even as you find yourself today here, braving the snow, is there a space you might be running from God? Is there a place that God is calling you into that you're like, no way, and you're running. I wonder. Let's jump into the next chapter, okay? Here we go. Chapter two. This is much different than the first chapter, though, okay? So chapter two, verse one says this, okay? From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God. He said, In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From the depths of the grave, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the deep, into the very heart of the seas, and the currents swirled around me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me. The surrounding The deep surrounded me, seaweed wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in forever. But you brought my life up from the pit, O Lord my God. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols, turn away from God's love for them. But I, with a song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will make good. Salvation comes from the Lord. And probably the most awkward sentence in the Bible. And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Isn't that great? Isn't that just like a, that word and image of that is just, I mean, can you imagine you're like spring break and you're just kicking it, you're just walking on the ocean, right? You're like, hey, it's so great, man. We're away from the snow, we're in the we're the beach now, and all of a sudden you're like this huge fish, and all of a sudden it's like, what was that? What I don't even know what it looks because it's like got fish guts and stuff. You know, it's like, is that a person? You know, it's like what imagine this in your head, right? But God commanded, and he's like, and he you don't have to be that one. Okay, you're the running part, but the next person will have to kind of look like that. Okay. I'm just kidding. No, they don't. I, actually, no one will come up now. That's just a bad thing to say. Anyways, okay. But the first chapter is Jonah is a running rebel. Okay? So, let's do this together. Ready? Chapter one, he is a running rebel. Okay? But chapter two, chapter two, and I need help here, okay? We need somebody that's remorsefully repentant. Well, somebody... Come, and you don't have to look like you just got vomited by a fish. That was the worst thing ever I could have said, right? I think it's like, no. So anybody, anyone that would help me? You want to come, Victor? Okay, okay. You ready? Okay, okay. Come on up, man. Come on up. 
Okay, I want you to go ahead and sit in that seat, okay? Here, go, bud. You have a fishing pole, okay? So I want you to imagine, okay, this is just to remind us, okay? So in chapter one, uh, Jonah is a? Very good, they're so picking up so fast. Okay, in chapter two, they are a? Great, remorseful, repentant, excellent. I got the good, it's up there too. Good, remorseful, repentant. Okay, Victor, I want you to imagine that you're remorseful. Like, you've just been vomited by a fish, and, and, but you know you're actually glad that you've been vomited by a fish because you realize how far you sank. I mean, the, the beauty imagery is this. He's got seaweed wrapped around his head. He's at the very, <laughs> so sorry, Victor, but he's at the very bottom of the sea. Um, Jonah is saying, I'm at the deepest place I've ever been in my life. At that place when I thought, I'm dead, I'm at the end of my rope, erp, here comes some large fish to like come in and eat me and then hang out for three days and then erp and throw him up. But when he's on that beach, and if we're sitting there at Cancun and we're like, doo-doo-doo, we're going to see a guy that just got thrown up, and he's like dancing because he realizes, even in this low place, how far God has brought him back up. He knows, as a remorseful repentant, the grace that could be his. Those who follow after false idols, he'll say these things. He has a deep sense of hope in the character of who God is and the grace that's experienced. So chapter 2, he is... A remorsefully repentant, or he's remorsefully repentant, okay? Here we go. We're going to chapter three, though, okay? Chapter three. Here we go. You ready? Yes, okay, okay, great. Okay, chapter three. Jonah, chapter three begins this way. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was a very important city. A visit required three days. On the first day Jonah started into the city, he proclaimed 40 more days and Nineveh will be overturned. The Ninevites believed God. They declared a fast and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When they, the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. Then the king issued a proclamation in Nineveh. Okay, and it's a proclamation, so I got it got to sound, I don't know, it's like an English proclamation, but I'm going to make it sound like that. Okay, okay, it says this, is what he says, okay, he says this. By decree of the king and the nobles, okay, do not let any man or beast, it, it always feels more if it's English, I don't know why, okay, okay, beast, herd or flock, taste anything, do not let I'm also bad at English accents. Okay. Them eat or drink, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent with compassion, turn from his fierce anger so that they will not perish, or we will not perish. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. Chapter one in Jonah is a. Uh, thank you, okay? Chapter two, he is. Great! And chapter three is. Well, I need help in a second, okay? There is a radical revival happening, okay? So I need someone that will come help me be. Have a radical revival. Who's gonna Who's gonna help me? Right, come on up. Awesome. Nice. What's your name? Tristan. Tristan. Tristan thanks so much. Okay. So you have no idea what we're gonna do right now, do you? Okay. So I don't know if that brings nervousness or not, but go ahead and sit down here. Okay. I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna grab a couple props here. Okay. This one's gonna be really fun. Okay. Not that they aren't all fun, but. Uh, all right. So. I'm bringing the box out now, okay? Here we go. So, what I'd like to do is this. Okay, this is, this is, this is a party's going on, okay? If I had background music right now, all of a sudden, Cool the Gang kicks in, right? Dun, dun, celebrate good times. Okay, this is, this is a time, okay? This is kind of that's what's going on here, okay? And I have all these different things. These are noisemakers. Okay? And they're going to help us. They're going to help us, okay? They're going to help us. And then this, you might have to try that, okay? Can you blow on that maybe? I don't know. You might have to touch the top of it and like, yeah. 
just like super loud. It's but like, okay, it's not nothing too much. Okay, maybe try this one. I don't know. Do you do this at all? Can you do that thing? Can you whistle? Sorry. Yeah, whistle. Okay. Yeah. Can you can you can you do this thing? It's like whistle. It's like yeah, that 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 really obvious word. Yeah. Um, doing pictionary here a little bit, like, or, or you know charades. Okay. But yeah. So so so. And, and then this too, of course. This is this is your radical revival hat, okay? So what's happening is this is there's a radical <laughs> revival going on, and it's a party, okay? So and what we're gonna have to do is they're gonna help you, okay? Whether you can have that too, just because you know for noise and stuff. Um, and, and all the all the preschool kids that are sick, they've tried those out already. So we're we're totally good, okay? We're totally good. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, no, they haven't. Um, but but what we're gonna do is this. Um, when we get to this one, we're gonna say, okay, uh, a, a radical revival, okay? And then you're gonna go woohoo at the end, okay? So let's pre- they're gonna do it too, okay? So it's not just you alone. Okay, so let's do this together, okay? Ready? On the count of three. Um, uh, chapter three of Jonah is a radical revival. Woohoo! Though you're so good. They're, they're, they're gonna memorize this forever. This is so good. This is so good. Thank you. Thank you, Tristan. Okay, great. So this is chapter one, two, and three. And we get to three, and I'm like, oh, it'd be so good if just, it was just three chapters. But it's not three chapters. It's four. And something else happens in four. Some amazing things happen in four. Let's put our noses down and find out what happens in chapter four, okay? So chapter four goes this way, okay? But Jonah was greatly displeased and became angry. He prayed to the Lord, oh, I'm gonna, he's pouting, so I'm gonna do it like a pouting, okay? Okay. Oh, Lord, is this not what I said when I was still at home? That's why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for it's better for me to die than to live. You been there? I have. But the Lord replied, have you any right to be angry? Jonah went out on the, and sat down at a place east of the city, and then he made himself a shelter, sat in its shade, and waited to see what would happen to the city. Then the Lord provided a vine and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade over his head to ease his discomfort, and Jonah was very happy about the vine. But at dawn, the next day, God provided a worm which chewed the vine so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind, and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint, and he wanted to die. And he said, it would be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, do you have a right to be angry about the vine? I do, Jonah said. I am angry enough to die. But the Lord said, you've been concerned about this vine, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left and many cattle as well. Should I not be concerned about that great city? End of book with a question mark. I need some help. Chapter four. Chapter four, we see that Jonah is rude and resentful. Now, I need someone that will, do you want help? Oh yeah, you're coming right up. Oh, thank you so much. I'm excited. Okay, come on up, okay? Now, what's your first name? Lily, okay, Lily, okay. Is that your sister over there? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, so <laughs> let's imagine real quick, not that these, these are perfect children and they would never, they have to imagine this because I know my twin sister, I'd have to imagine it with her. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so, but I need you to kind of feel like resentful. Has, 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 like, okay, say there was one piece of chocolate cake left and your sister totally took it and you even marked it, like you wrote your name on the top of that piece of chocolate, like your name. Lily, right? You wrote Lily and she took it. 
<laughs> what would happen if she took that and you wanted that piece of chocolate cake? What would you do, do you think? What would it look like? What would you do? You would sleep in Leah's bed and take all the blankies. Look out. She knows how to get you back. Just so you know. Never know. That was pretty that was a pretty good one, okay? So but I want you to think, I want you to think, I want you to be kinda frumpy. Is there a frumpy? Yeah. Frumpy. Is that a frumpy? Can I see okay, is that frumpy? Is she frumpy? Let me see it one more time. A frumpiness. This Oh, that's good. That's good. It's like kinda just just <clears throat> She's good? Okay, mom, I'm trying, sorry I'm not trying to teach these kids this, but okay, okay, great. So, if we get here, okay, chapter one in Jonah is a uh, running rebel. Okay, running legs, good. Okay, chapter two, he is a good, remorseful, repentant. Okay, chapter three, we see a yeah, that's right, with the woohoo at the end. That's great, you guys are so good. And then chapter four, Jonah is rude and resentful. Oh, that's good. <laughs> That bottom lip almost touched her nose, I think. That was good. That's a good one, okay? And I need a couple things for you, too, okay? A couple props. I need you to hold this. This is a vine. And this is one of the best ones, because I have gummy worms. You want some gummy worms? She can have them, right? Yeah, right. It's like, no, she can't have them. Like, oh, the whole sermon's ruined. Okay, no, perfect. Okay, those are the worms, because remember, he got a vine, and then the worms ate the vine, and then it fell over, and he was really complaining and angry. Yeah, that's what we're going to remember. Okay, good. Okay, great. Okay, awesome. So, what we're going to do is we're looking at chapter four, and we see him, and he is, he's rude and resentful. If you hear in the text, you hear him keep saying, there's anger. He's like, I'm angry. And God I think in compassion says, why are you angry? I'm angry enough to die. Why? And then he complains because God's gracious and compassionate. He got a front row seat close enough where his eyelashes wouldn't be burned by the brimstone and fire that he was expecting to come down. He's close enough, but he wants to see the action. And he's sitting on the hill, ready for God to do what he's gonna do. And he's like, I knew you were gonna be good, God. I knew you were gonna, I knew... I knew it. What happens is they put on sackcloth with basically like, um, it's, it's uh, basically like, you ever done potato sack races before? Yeah, that's sackcloth, basically. Just let's put potato sacks on, okay? That's what it is. And it means, in a way, it's, it's this way of remorse. It's like, outwardly, I, I, I feel all um, just, just undone. And it reflects the inwardly, that they're undone. And these people responded to God and God was ready, always ready, ready to meet him with compassion. Always ready. The one thing that we see in all four of these chapters of the book of Jonah is God's consistent, persistent, compassionate love that pursues. And maybe today you came in and fought through the snow and got here, but deep down you want to be anywhere else except here. Deep down, when we start talking about things about God or things that maybe it brings up things inside of you and you go, so I don't know what to do with this. I have a version. I don't want that. I encourage you to stay put here. And if you're running from God, pause and ask, what type of God am I running from? Because it's not the God that's in Scripture that's revealed most clearly in the person of Jesus. Jesus. If you knew that God, if we trusted and leaned into that God, we'd be running back to him and not away from him. Chapter two, you might be running from God right now. If you're here and running from God, thank you for being here. I wanna encourage you that you can't outrun God and he's not trying to inflict harm on you. He wants you, all of you, in relationship. Chapter two, we see that he is remorsefully repentant, and perhaps some of you in your life actually realize how stinking broken and things have happened in your life. And even though he's actually falling at the bottom of the ocean, he's at the very lowest place ever. A fish comes by and eats him. In that moment, you know you're dead and you've given up. Let go and let God. Well, you know what? God still meets him right there. He meets him right there, and he wants him 
And in that moment, he realizes how stinking rebellious he's been and how God is grace is greater than that. Do you know that God loves you more than you love yourself? Do you know how healing that has been when I've sat with that? God loves you more than you love yourself in our selfishness and our rebellion, and he keeps coming. And in those moments, that's when, that's when repentance comes about. Repentance is a turn, returning to love. That's what it means. It's a return to love. It's a walking away from them, but it's returning to love. And that's where we find him in chapter two. And in chapter three, we see because he's like that, chapter three is, he is a, there is a radical revival. Sorry, I didn't give you a prompting there. Okay, let's go. Chapter three, it's a radical revival. Woo-hoo. Okay, good. We got the ending part there. Good, good, good. Okay, great. There's something going on. See, now he's opened up and all of a sudden, and maybe you are in this place right now where maybe you're opening up and expanding and all of a sudden, as you draw near to God, all of a sudden, people and things around you, God is affecting in a good way. All of a sudden, relationships you thought never would get mended. Situations you never thought you would be able to do. Situations that you thought, there's no way this could ever change. All of a sudden, God's doing it. And, and he's using you, and it's, you can't do anything except celebrate. Maybe you are in this chapter, and you're experiencing this grace and compassion in this new way. Or maybe you've been a Christian a long time. And maybe you've been through some of these stages and you find yourself here. The root of this is anger. Anger comes up so often. Angry at God for some reason. Do you know what Jonah didn't stop doing? He didn't stop praying. I know I was making fun of him a little bit. I want to die. But you know what? He still was praying. God is big enough for you to pray in your anger. Do you know that? The Psalms are full of that. Keep praying. Keep being there. God is big enough. And in those moments, if there's anger that's deeply doing there, and all of a sudden there's a rude and resentfulness that begins to take root, know that even there God wants to meet you and me and change us. Is there resentfulness toward God somewhere in your heart right now? If so, know that God still desires to meet you, restore you, and bring you to a place of wholeness. Now what I'd like to do is I would like you all to give a big clap to all my helpers that were able to come up here. And I have, sorry mom, I got the extra, okay. And I would love to give you guys all some some Swedish fish from um, the prophet Yona. But anyways, um, we'll have some fun. Um, and you can go ahead and take those. And, um, and if there's, you can take those if you want to take those. And I'll take this. And ooh, you, get a, you want those gummy worms too? Do you want those? Okay, no, thank you. Okay, so, okay. It's been on a plant and you don't know where the plant's been. Yeah, I know. That's how I, that's how I feel about it too. <laughs> thank you. But go ahead and go ahead and stand. If you can head back to your seats now, but thank you so much. And we can clap them back that way. Thank you. Thanks, Tristan. I appreciate it. And go ahead and you can instead this direction. Oh no, you get to keep that. Oh, did he give it to you? Oh, you can give one to your mom. <laughs> two things that come up from this passage, <laughs> um, two things that stand out in this passage are the compassionate way that God meets the Ninevites and the compassionate way God meets Jonah. And wherever you find yourself today, know that in these four chapters, as a running rebel, as a remorseful repentant, with a radical revival or rude and resentful. Wherever you find yourself, God's compassion will find you and continue to meet you and invite you into relationship with him to restore. And this heart, which was way outside the Israel nation, God was outside any boundaries that Jonah could uh, understand. Uh, God was blowing Jonah's mind in how much compassion he has for the outsiders. These people represented the people in the farthest places and if you feel you like you are on the farthest place and you're like, if I walk in this building, I'm gonna get struck by lightning. You say things like that all the time. Good, all of us are there. <laughs> We're all outsiders and we've all been brought in. And if it gives you any hope, know that the way in God has a desire for these Ninevites, this compassion, is the same way he has for us. Right where we're at right now. As we are. Before any response. God's compassion brings about Repentance. And then I'd like to highlight this last one too. It's the way in which he deals with Jonah. He deals with Jonah. 
Jesus says and uses the idea of Jonah being in the belly of a fish, a large fish for three days, because as he's sitting there, these hard-hearted people are trying to trick him. And Jesus knows, I'm not a dog and pony show. I'm not gonna jump through hoops for you. I love you too much to let you minimize my true witness, Jesus says to them. And so Jesus challenges them and says, I'm not gonna give you another sign. I'm not gonna feed another 5,000 people. What I'm going to do is give you the sign of Jonah. In the same way Jonah was in the belly of a large fish for three days and three nights, so too I will go into a tomb for three days and three nights. And that, in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus is where we see the greatest clear compassion of God. That's where we see the motivation, not just as a prophet who Jonah was, but the very presence of God among us, speaking to us and expressing life to us. And that's, that's who we look to. As Jesus says these words, the one who is greater than Jonah is here now. And those words are true now too. Wherever you find yourself, my desire is that you would respond to God authentically. And that if you are in one of these four places, that you would know that compassionate God would love to keep meeting you and changing you and making you more and more in his image. He loves you more than you love yourself. He does. Let me pray for us as we do the final song.